Melody, thank you so much for joining me on the Biscuit Blitz. I really appreciate it. Yes, thank you for having me. And happy birthday. Oh my gosh, I can't believe you knew. Thank yes. you so much. It's my birthday. <laughs> I am 23 years old today. It's really awesome. quite so remarkable. Yeah. Um, so before I start the five minute Blitz countdown, yeah. I wanted you to just share with everyone your name, how long you've lived in Charlotte, and kind of a little summary of what you do. Yeah, sure. So my name is Melody Grills. I've been in Charlotte since November 2011. And so I have two roles, three really. So the first big one is as a mom, who went to the awesome KGB, right? That is a job into itself. Um, but I am also a speaker and a coach for domestic violence and mothers. Uh, so I talk to, you know, I help with survivors try to cope with the steps after leaving. And then I'm also um, a communication strategist. So I mainly work with nonprofits and sometimes small businesses to clear up the communication so that's as culturally um, acute as well as, you know, but also on point to meet their needs. So yeah. Wow, so you're, you're serving many people in a lot of different ways, which is yeah. impressive. Um, yeah. And before we dive in, I have to say, I, you and my wife have got to meet because my wife, Sarah, works in the motherhood space as well. And I think yeah. you two would love each other and yeah. there could be opportunities for um, collaboration. You just never Let's know. do it. Yes. So we'll I love that it. happen too. More magic happening here at the Blitz. Okay. Let me start the clock All and right. then we will, we will dive in. So um, let's just start right off the bat with COVID-19. How has this pandemic uh, impacted your business, um, the way you're doing business? How have you responded yeah. to it as an entrepreneur? Yeah, so it's interesting because I originally worked full-time at a nonprofit and um, I quit. December 31st was my last day. And so I went out on my own. I'm like, great, I can focus on my business. And, you know, I have a couple of clients for communications, but working on a speaker and, you know, coaching business. And then COVID happened. And so with COVID happened, I had to shift a little bit, but it gave me an opportunity to really delve a little bit deeper into the type of services I want to provide. And I also wound up getting a certification in professional coaching. So the pivot was scary, but necessary. Well, I can't imagine it was any more scary than, you know, your blog post on January 1st, 2020. <laughs> that I did a thing I never thought I'd do. I quit my job. I quit my job prior to having another one. And sure enough, like you're saying, we went headlong into a pandemic a, a couple months later, yeah. two months later, and you were found you found yourself in a place where you had to pivot. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about those pivots because I know your work around domestic violence, mm -hmm. you, you've created um, uh, some webinars or programs that are specific mm -hmm. to people, women that are dealing with um, domestic violence in the age of social distancing and self isolation. Right. How has that been going? Yeah, so um, it's been up and down because, like, you know, there's a big need, um, but the impact for services, you know, has been tremendous. Yeah. Like, it's really limited. It's limited resources. It's limited impact, um, you know, support. So that's been a challenge, but I've just really try to work with um, victims and survivors to how can they cope together, um, but also how can they cope um, with family, friends, and with themselves. So, you know, it's been interesting, but also fun to kind of like come up with these new, unique ways to really support them. Yeah, no, it's, it is, it's a time for, of creativity. Um, yeah. And when we speak of creativity, it's, we, we speak of it from a, a wide scope definition. It yeah. is how we creatively approach our issues, our problems, our community. Yeah challenges and clearly you're in the throes of that which is great um so uh t let's talk about you personally how have you been coping how have you been staying sane and connected and yeah. um, and just like you know charging ahead yeah so it's been tricky uh, to be perfectly honest like it, it's yeah. been a challenge i'm a really like i'm an extrovert i love to be around people i get energy around that um it sparks my creativity and so this shift into like being secluded and being at home in isolation has been a challenge. I have my up and down moments. You know, sometimes I'm just like working and chugging away. And other times I'm just like, let me go create some random things around my house. Let me redecorate. Like that's been a whole <laughs> big thing for me. And, um, and then learning new recipes. And I don't even like to cook, but here we are. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that is absolutely true. And plus everyone's creating so much content right now. Have you, is, is there been something that you've been following um, on social media or otherwise that's been feeding you or that you've just been enjoying sort of, you know, taking in from a content perspective out there? Yeah, so uh, it's kind of, I've mainly been listening to what's not being said. 
mm. versus what is being said. So what's missing from these different conversations? And that's what kind of sparked my webinars about, you know, yes, we have um, victims who are honed in, but we also have survivors who think about those moments where they've been in isolation and they know what that's like. So how can they, you know, cope with that, even though they're out of the situation? So for me, it's really what's not being said. So it's been blog posts, it's been Instagram videos, just different comments. I'm in a lot of Facebook groups. And so that's really kind of sparked the um, shift and the creativity and new ideas as well. I, I quite love your answer, this idea that you're looking for what's not being said, you're listening for what's not being said. It's like you're looking for the negative space out there. And that's, that's counterintuitive to how we're sort of our default setting. So I just love that that's what you're looking for. That to me is a mark of someone who's ready to serve and who's a leader. I mean, that's- Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. definitely ready um, to serve. <laughs> what, uh, my, in our final 30 seconds, tell me something you've been missing, you know, something you can't wait to pull back into your life once we resume some sense of normalcy after this crisis. Yeah. Um, being around more than 10 people, right? <laughs> no, being around more than more than five people, like, uh, you know, really gathering and holding space for each other and hugging each other. Oh my gosh, to like hug, I miss that so much. And so those are the things, is just being around a bunch of people and hugging. <laughs> well, Melody, I cannot agree more. Even when I see members of my family who are kind of in our bubble, our pod that yeah. we're creating, you know, I, I'm not even hugging them, I'm elbowing them, and we are huggers as well, you know, and so I, I can't wait for that. Um, we're definitely singing out of the same hymn book, and I can't wait to give you a hug someday, right? Yes, so, I know! <laughs> the sooner, the better. Um, Melly, thank you so much for spending a few minutes getting blitzed on the, uh, on the Biscuit Blitz. I've been um, blitzed, yes. You've been blitzed, and I can't think of a better time in humanity that, that the world needs coaching and that the world needs support. And so it's just amazing that you're that you took the leap that you decided to take really right before the world needed it the most. And so right. that is to me wow. yeah. an admirable thing. It's like you had a premonition and you did it. <laughs> so right. Keep it up and thank you for your service and, and thanks for um for just being a great charlatan. Really appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. I appreciate you. <laughs>